Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Mikado de Lisboa, which is new from Vital Lacerda and co-designer Julian Pombo, who together designed the solo mode for Lisboa. It's kind of Big Brother. This has got some similarities to the stalls and streets in a little section of the game Lisboa, but you don't need any knowledge of that to play this, and it's a much uh, lighter, faster game. I'm playing a two-player game today against Little Glass Marty. The game does go up to four players, and it includes solo play as well. You play the game in the same way for solo, but there are restrictions imposed on you, different challenges to meet and try and uh, beat the score of. But for now, we'll be playing two players. Now, you can play as well. The game comes with shields, so you can play with hidden money. And it does say in the rulebook the designers recommend you play that way. But don't worry, Marty and I are very honest and we won't peek. Before we get started, I recommend you turn on the subtitles to the Klingon channel. Any mistakes I might make will be corrected there. Thanks, Steve. And if you would like to help me keep making playthroughs, there is a Patreon linked in the description. Uh, everything I make is thanks to the patrons. And if you would like me to make more and get voting on videos and join the Discord and stuff, it's all there. So there are four things that you can do on your turn in Lisboa. You can place a stall, you can place a customer, you can place a restaurant, and you can just earn a coin. Obviously, that's a more last resort thing. If all players choose take a coin consecutively, it triggers the end of the game, as well as there only being four stall spaces left. The grey restaurants, the unclaimed restaurants, count as available spaces still. Or if there are only four places that customers can be placed, so you place those at the ends of the rows and columns here. So someone will trigger the end of the game, everyone else gets one more turn, and then that's it. We count up our money, most money wins. So I don't have a restaurant to place. You can't place a customer until there's at least a stall somewhere. And I don't really want to just spend my turn just getting a coin, so let's get a stall out. So what can we kind of see? The, the customers have a lot that would like some uh, grape stalls. Unfortunately, I didn't start with those. I have got fish, flowers, and tomatoes. I think let's start with some tomatoes. That wouldn't be too bad. So to place a stall, you can place it anywhere. If you place it on top of a restaurant, though, that means you will get that restaurant tile, and you can choose that as your action in a future turn to put that out somewhere. Restaurants boost the value of all adjacent restaurants. And you get a coin when you place restaurants as well. Uh, so I am going to go for, you see every restaurant here relates to a type of business. And once they're active, you can see there's color matching. So the pizza restaurants want tomatoes, the burger restaurants want chicken, the wine bars want grapes, tea shops want flowers, and the sushi restaurants want fish. The pub, however, is special because it boosts everything. So I would like to have control of where the pub goes. So I'm going to place that there. The cost for placing a restaurant is one coin for every stall, including the one you just placed, in that row or column, whichever is the most expensive. So it's the only thing out there. So it's going to cost me my one starting coin. Last thing I need to do is to pick a new stall. I think why not keep going for tomatoes? Let's see what we can get. We need a new stall from the bag. And then Marty needs to choose. Now, he did start off with some grapes. And you see, there's a every kind of row of customers would like some. I think he he could get some out and he would like a a wine bar, but they are right in the corner. So it's if he if he goes right in the corner to take them, it's not like he can put loads of things next to it. He can only put maybe two things next to that, which might be a restriction if he wants to try and get in on my pub. Let's, uh, let's just have it in the corner, though. So it's alone in a row and column. He gets that wine bar, has to pay a coin, because it's the only thing there, and he needs to pick something new. Well, if I'm going for tomatoes, and I'm going to be putting things out that benefit those, maybe he wants to have the option of putting some tomato stalls out as well, although we are both penniless at the moment, so we're going to have to do something about that first. I am going to take a coin. I don't want to put that pub out just yet and have Marty put something right next to it. Marty, though, is just going to put out his uh, wine bar. Oh, we need a new stall from the bag from when he took one as well. Chicken, chicken, fish. Uh, so you gain a coin for placing a restaurant out, and when his wine bar scores now, he'll get an extra coin for that. Over to me, and I can kind of be planning where I want these things, maybe surround the, the pub with things that I want to place. So that's on its own in a row and column, so that only costs me one. It gains me... Uh, sushi restaurant, but it costs me my coin. And then I think to have something different, let's have a chicken stall. Pop 
my stand on it. And new from the bag is flowers. Now let's have a look at putting a customer out. You can do this for your turn. You choose a customer from the available display and there's a few restrictions. You have to place a customer. The number of customers on the tiles is the level of the tile basically. So to place a level one customer, there has to be a stall in that row or column and the customer has to benefit you in some way. So there's one stall in this column. Marty couldn't place this customer because he hasn't got a flower or a chicken stall here. It has to benefit you in some way. You can't just block for the fun of it. I think he's got tomatoes, he's got grapes. He's gonna go for this customer here. And let's see, placing it there, I could maybe get in on tomatoes here. I think he wants to place it in this row. But he wants to take advantage of this stall again. So he's gonna put the customer up there actually and risk me putting some tomatoes there. So the way that stall score is, it's one for the stall itself, plus one for any adjacent restaurants. They have to be orthogonally adjacent, not diagonally, multiplied by the number of customers on the tile. So this would be one, two times one. So he gets two more coins there. And in future in this column, if tomatoes or grapes are placed in this column, they will score instantly for all of the customers that are already there. And there's a little trick that you can do where if you can't quite afford to place a tile, but the money that you would earn from that tile would give you enough to afford the tile, you're allowed to kind of time travel in that way. So over to me, unfortunately, I haven't got tomatoes or grapes. Well, I've put my tomatoes out there. That's why Marty probably chose to put that customer there. I'm gonna need some money if I want to carry on here. I think I'm going to I'm going to put the pub out. I'm going to put it out and get myself a single coin. So they're boosted now. Hmm. Does that change things for Marty? Cuz he was just going to put his grapes out there. And that's kind of why how I didn't put the pub there because I can see which stalls he's got. I can't see how much money he's got. But I don't think that would work out too badly for Marty. He is going to place this here. It's basically free. It it would cost him 2. It's 2 in the row or column and then he would earn 1 plus 1 times 1, so he'd get 2 back. He earns that burger restaurant, and he takes something new. I think maybe chicken. Go for some chicken. Uh, and new stall comes out. It's some more grapes, so hopefully Marty can grab that and put it there. Or maybe I'll do that. So I wonder if I am stalling too much here. Marty can get in on the pub. Do I want to put something next to the pub now? I was going to try you know, putting other things next to it. You know, I want to put maybe the sushi restaurant down there and that would get me a, a pizza thing that I could put here to boost both the tomatoes again before they score. But am I taking up too much time to do that? Because it's two coins to put something there or there and I've only got one. I'm going to wait it out a little bit more. Slow and steady, slow and steady. There is only one stall in this row or column. So that costs me my one coin and I get a pizza restaurant. Marty surely needs to get in on my pub. He's got a flower stall himself, so why doesn't he place here? That costs him two, because he gets a tea shop then that he can use to boost his flower stall. And then, oh yes, he wants grapes, doesn't he? Maybe boost here again. So now, if I want to put a tomato stall out, I've maybe waited too long, and Marty will get a benefit in this row at least. I'm just going to put this uh, pizza restaurant out, gain myself a coin. Oh, I should have taken a stall first. Yeah, I would I would definitely have taken the grapes away from Marty. Whoops. Subtitles. Okay, so Marty's choice. Maybe he'll go for some fish. Keep his options open a little bit. So over to me. I need to get something scoring. There's two stalls in this row. We could put two customers in, but the only one that wants tomatoes also wants grapes. So it would benefit Marty almost as much as me. I'm putting something out for free for him. I could start a bit smaller. There's one customer here wants uh, tomatoes and flowers. So tomatoes in this column would score. So this is worth one, two, three times one, three coins. Marty wouldn't mind some more grapes scoring, especially since each one is worth two. So that's four times two. That is eight coins for Marty. So you can't leave all the rows and columns empty for one person. I've got enough to get in on the pub though. What would I like up there? Ideally another tomato stall, but that isn't available. So, yeah, we don't want grapes out. So I'm, I'm gonna put that there, just so I've got that surrounded. So that's gonna be two again, because there's two in the column. And then pick a new one, fish again. I've got that uh, sushi restaurant, haven't I? And we're running out of stalls to put out and haven't really put customers on. 
Uh, Morty has got a ton of money, could put anything out, really. What does he want to do? Oh, we need to see a new stool, don't we? Grapes. Let's see, the cheapest place to build right now would be here. He would get another wine restaurant, at least. He could try... Yeah, he could... If he goes down here, I'm almost certainly going to put the sushi restaurant somewhere else. So why doesn't he put the tea out there that he's got a booster for? He's also got a booster for chicken, hasn't he? He's going to go down there, so that's going to cost him uh, two. He needs something new. He wants grapes. Both are just going for monopolies of one thing. Is there something that wants... Oh, 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 oh. Chicken and tomatoes, and they're both mine. So that is worth... One, two, three, four, five times two. That's ten coins. Definitely go for that. Marty is going to put grapes out there. So that's going to cost him two and two. So two. It is minus one coin, by the way, at the end of the game for every restaurant you've still got in front of you. Uh, oh, a new stall needs to be in the display. Pay two to put that stall out. And then what's he going to take? He's got a couple of burger restaurants now. Why not go for chicken? And new stool comes out, and it's going to be flowers. Okay, now I'd like to put some sushi out there to boost my fish restaurant and to block one of Marty's spaces off. But if, it, as soon as I place the sushi restaurant, he has got a fish stool. He's going to put it next to it. Mind games. But actually, if I place the fish stool out first, that would cost three. And I get a tea shop. Then even if Marty blocks me off in one space, I can get the other. I might not be able to block him off there. But if I did, he would just be able to go there. It's just He's probably not going to boost that stall. It's kind of blocked off, isn't it? Uh, he'll go for fish again. Okay. Is there a customer that wants grapes and flowers? No. Well, there is, but just a one customer. Best if there's you know, double customers going. One that wants grapes... Is there a three customer that wants grapes, but not tomatoes or fish? No. Although, this would make... That would make the fish score before my stall's on it, but he's just making six to my three. It doesn't seem worth it. He's going to put some chicken out here for three coins. Neither of us got many stalls left. What's going to come out? Some more fish. He's going to go for flowers. Although, yeah, he can only put two more stalls out. He still gets a choice of three. Some more chicken. Yeah, not tomatoes must be right at the bottom. Although, the ship kind of sailed on those. I'm going to put my sushi restaurant out there. Yeah, either way, I can't put it next to another restaurant, so that's going to be one for me. Marty is going to put a burger restaurant out up there. And... Well, this is great for me. Tomatoes and fish. One, two, three, four, five times three. Fifteen coins. New customer. Oh, no, Marty wouldn't. That's my chicken restaurant. Yeah, he put it there. <laughs> Thinking that that was his. He put it there, then. Is there just flowers and chicken? There is, but it's not a three. It's something, though, isn't it? One, two, three times two is six coins. Oh, I can put... Maybe my tea place there? It will cost me three. I'll kind of block Marty's off. But it does mean that... Yeah, and I would benefit from a stool on this row now. They can't exclude me even if the right combination comes up. I'll get some more flowers. No more stools coming out there. Oh, there's three here now. So Marty is going to go for grapes and tomatoes. Because he only wants grapes to score. One, two times three. That's six coins for him. Tomatoes and chicken. That would be great in there, but... Customers already placed in those ends. There isn't a similar three customer that just wants flowers, unfortunately. Let's get my tea stall out there for one. Marty. Oh, this would cost four. Ooh. I don't know that that's so good. Maybe it is. Marty, Marty can put his flower stall there for four. Because there are four type customers. He'll go for chicken he's already got a chicken he's already got a fish go for flowers then to have something different i suppose because i can't do anything about that there's nowhere else that's got four stools okay is there another customer i could have put out that would be acceptable to go here anyone yeah flowers will score marty more but it's got to be flowers or grapes 
Let's see, grapes would score Marty two and me nothing if I just put a grapes one out there. Flowers, let's see, just the base flowers, Marty gets three and I get two. That's better, isn't it? It's better to have something that's just flowers. Yeah, so we can't put that four flowers out there and get loads. It's just going to be three for Marty, two for me, times one customer. Sorry, Marty. I had to do some denying there. Okay. Marty, then, is... Oh, is there flowers and grapes? No, only for a one customer. Chicken and flowers? No. Fish and flowers, which I could do there. So does he want to do something about that? Or he could, you know, boost his own restaurant here, ready to do something else. I'm going to do that. So that's going to be one, two, three, four times two and nothing for Marty. Well, there is flowers and grapes. It's only a two. Maybe you could get a three out there later. Because that is one, two, three, four, five. That's ten for him. That's better than what I just did. There are five spaces left. Just realized that's still available. I thought we'd gone past it, but we haven't. I think we're fairly similar on scores. Let's see. Can we do flowers and fish again? It's unlikely, isn't it? Maybe a better customer will have that combination. That's the only row that's got four in it. And it's already full of customers. Three that wants tomato and fish has already come out. Oh, I could maybe block Marty off here, not letting him get any more grapes. Just do tomatoes and... Oh, tomatoes and flowers helps him. Tomatoes and... Oh, tomatoes and grapes helps him. <gasps> what about... Oh, fish and grapes helps him. <laughs> Over here as well. What about a three that wants fish, but not flowers or chicken? Fish and chicken. Fish and grapes. There we go. So that just scores me two times three. Yeah, that's okay. New one comes out and could always be revealing the perfect thing for Marty. He could do grapes but not fish here since there's only ever going to be two stalls in this row now. That would be what? Three? That would be six. Or he could put the three out that doesn't get me anything. It doesn't score his flowers, unfortunately. But that would be nine for him and nothing for me. Yeah, he'll go for that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, still plenty of customer spaces. There isn't tomato and fish but not grapes. Oh, because it's there. Uh, what if I just go for tomato and chicken then? Because my tomato stall is pretty nice. So that's one, two, three times three. It's nine. And then, let's see, I think Marty is always playing catch up in this now. He needs to score a good customer every time because I keep finding them. The best grape, grape customer here is only going to be two per time, which is six things. What about someone that wants tomatoes, but not. No, there isn't a three customer that wants tomatoes and at all. Never mind tomatoes and nothing else. Looking for places where there's three stalls, I think that's all of them. And yeah, grapes and flowers, he should have waited and put in that out. And if he ends the game, I can go next. He's going to go grapes and tomatoes then. That's three times two is six. So for me, I can do just fish and grapes, so tomatoes wouldn't be involved. Oh no, perfect. Yeah, I think I've got this. Fish and flowers, and Marty hasn't got either of those. Two, four times three is twelve. Maybe Marty should have ended the game a few turns ago. New customer, but I don't think any customer can really benefit Marty that much. The other two grapes one has fish, which would benefit me. Oh, actually, his last stall. His last stall, if you put fish here, it would cost him four. He would get back three, six, eight. That would earn him four and me nothing. But no, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, because that would trigger the end of the game. I'd have to see if I could score something better than that. But I think I'm already in the lead by a lot. And Marty's got three restaurants that he's going to lose points for. So that triggers the end. Because there's only four spaces left here now. I get one more turn. So let's see, any restaurant I put out... See, I would benefit from tomatoes more than Marty. Because I've got the pizza restaurant as well as the pub. And by putting that there, all those customers are already in place. So I can't take advantage of there being more customers in that row or column. Yeah, putting fish... All flowers here would cost five and get five back because the customer's in place. Putting grapes here cost me four and get me five back. Tomatoes is probably the thing to do though, isn't it? I would get six and Marty would get four. That gets me two. So I think, just from a quick glance, that I have got this. Let's see, 10, 20, 30, 50, 60, 6. And Marty has 20, 30, 40, 
four. I think there was there's one like great big oh yeah denying him that four there and then everything had kind of filled up to the point where we couldn't really get fours without ending the game at that point so we were kind of hovering over who could score more and it just happened the way things had been placed the way customers came out and the restaurants and everything it just worked out really well for me but there we go that is Mercado de Lisboa hope you enjoyed that and it gave you an idea of what the game is like if you'd like to know what I think then you can go over to the first impressions that will be linked on the screen very shortly or it's in the description now again Patreon funds all of this any support will be massively appreciated thank you all you patrons that are watching as well and uh, yeah there's over 500 playthroughs on this channel if you would like to find some more loads of Vital Lacerda games I've done a couple of playthroughs for Big Lisboa uh, in its solo form and loads of others as well yeah, I'm sure you'll find one that you'd uh, like the look of thank you very much for watching this one though and I'll see you wherever you end up bye everyone <laughs>